So we're here today to uh, reintroduce Caledonia fulva, the tawny spider orchid. It's nationally endangered back into private Trust for Nature property here uh, in the Wimmera. I enjoy the people um, and that's one of the things about a lot of the orchid things. The people who are there have got a very positive outlook on life and they're great to be with. They're just average you and me. But it's, it's, it's good to spend time with them. And I like to see the plants going into the ground and seeing how they grow and learning about which bit of the ground they will grow in and how we do establish reintroduced populations and how they become part of the environment and no longer dependent on us. The Royal Botanic Gardens Orchid Conservation Program uh, is a long-standing program that's been running for well over 20 years. We're currently working on about 30 federally endangered species, uh, looking at their ecology, mycorrhizal associations, pollination and reintroduction of these species. So today we're introducing uh, several hundred uh, plants of Caledonia fulva, the tawny spider orchid. It's federally endangered and it was as common as muck across our box iron bark forests of Victoria. The box iron bark forests have uh, been absolutely decimated since European settlement. So we've lost something in the order of 70 or 80 percent of our box iron bark natural ecosystems. And Caledonia fulva has really paid the price uh, for that loss. I suppose it got to the stage where we realised if we were going to do something, things had to be grown because most of the populations were too far gone to recover just by working on the habitat. Somebody told me you couldn't grow orchids from seed and you knew that had to be ridiculous and it was just a matter of working out how so that became a fascination. Of One of the really unique things about orchids is their tiny seeds. In fact they have the tiniest seeds of all angiosperm and they have um, very little nutritive layer around the seeds and so they're completely reliant in the wild um, on mycorrhizal fungi in order to germinate which is where they get all their nutrients. Propagating our orchids here in the lab can be quite a complex process. We first need to isolate the fungi from the roots of wild plants. We'll grow the fungi up in petri dishes and then sow the seed with the fungi. The germinating seedlings will then move on to larger flasks a few months later and then, and then a few months after that we'll be potting them up into the nursery to then grow out into adult plants. Our nursery here is probably one of the largest collections of uh, Australian terrestrial orchids in the world. We have uh, almost 60 threatened species that we, we look after. The lab germinating something for the first time is, is super exciting and you do a little victory dance and then when they're emerging the year later in the pots is also a lovely stage to see and, and then when they're flowering for the first time something really rare is it's just incredible and that feeling of we've got something growing and cultured uh, in the nursery that we can then get seed from and, and save the species, that, that thought's really incredible. We've been working with Caledonia fulva uh, since the early 2000s and we've been reintroducing it back into this private Trust for Nature property uh, since 2015. And so today's plantings will bring up the number of plants that have been planted here back to close to 800 plants um, back into this site in several subpopulations, which is really nice. And we're getting really good natural pollination here and seed set. And for the last couple of years, we've seen our first um, rec natural recruitment of this species back into this site. We're working with a variety of stakeholders, including the Wimmera CMA, uh, Project Platypus. Uh, I work with the Royal Botanic Gardens and the Department of Environment, Land, Water and Planning. And also the wonderful Australasian Native Orchid Society, the Victorian group, are really the backbone of this program and that help us introduce our orchids. Well, I fell in love with orchids many years ago in the bush and I just, just want to come every time. Mm. 
many of us can recall in younger days seeing orchids where they're no longer there. So again, that worries us and then being able to do something about that in a small way is useful. As best as we control, it seems they've got a pretty good chance here. They've got a, a big area of habitat. It's pretty intact from what we can see. It's got a great variety of insects and birds and all, all sorts of things that make up the total environment. So there's a good chance, I think, that it's, it's as good as any chance we've got. Our reintroductions have largely been successful and the reason is for that really is the effort that has been put into matching the vegetation, ensuring that the mycorrhizal fungi is present, um, finding sites that have natural pollination and the pollinator is present. And then it's really about numbers as well. So we know for reintroductions that small populations uh, plants that are introduced, you know, 50 plants or less, really are unlikely to survive. And you really re need to be introducing threatened species in the hundreds um, in order to see population growth. Ultimately, we don't want it threatened anymore. So we want, we want to be putting out thousands of plants in multiple populations. And by doing this research first, we can really then optimise how to do that.